This is a Shields of Shame exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Elderly Lois Howard, arrested by Canton police in Cherokee County, Georgia. Following a grocery store dispute, Howard alleges mistreatment, including being shoved into a police car, breaking her ribs. Chaos ensues at Cherokee County Detention Center as jail staff refuses admission due to Howard's injuries. Officers left her in the lobby anyways and fled the scene. Listen to the interviews and gather the facts and form your own assessment of the truth. Please visit shieldsofshame.com for behind the scenes content. Thank you for supporting our work. Also consider becoming a member. It's just 99 cents a month and you will have access to bonus content and early releases. Cherokee County Public Safety. Cam, please. Hey, it's Cam. Um, so Lois, how are you doing? Are you doing a show? I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. Um, she just called up here and she is at the animal shelter. Um, she pretty much said that they, that 329 and 348 forced her into a car and now she's got rib pain and was saying, Lois Howard. Uh, said that they forced her into what car? Into the police car. They tried to, they took her to the ADC. Right. And she's saying that they forced her into the police car and now she's got pain in her ribs. Does she want to go to the hospital? Yeah. We've got fire headed out there. I just wanted to let you know. Well, I think she was complaining of her ribs whenever they were on scene, but... Okay. I'll find out from Leonard about what was causing her real pain. All right. All right. Alrighty, I just wanted to let you know. All right, thanks. All right, bye. Today's date is May 24, 2021. The time now is 5.06 p.m. In the room is myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer, and Sergeant Gregory Ayers. This is in reference to an internal affairs investigation and interview with um, Sergeant Ayers. Okay, before we even get started, what I'd like to cover, do you know what Garrity is? No. Okay, I'll explain Garrity. All right. This is in reference to an eye investigation um, involving Officer Leonard. Okay. Um, I don't have a IA number for it yet, only because Karen's been out. But, Garrity warning. This questioning uh, concerns administrative matters relating to the official business of the Canton Police Department. So anything you tell me that could possibly be criminal cannot be used against you. And anything obtained from those statements cannot be used either. Okay. This is just an administrative matter. All right, what I always give everybody is the same same thing across the board. you got to be truthful with me. You've got to be honest, fully, completely honest. And this is an administrative matter, okay? It has nothing to do with the criminal aspect of it, which is what we just covered. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further into this. Um, this internal affairs investigation, again, is on Officer Leonard. In reference to um, an incident that happened... Um, Involving her, uh, uh, well, involving her and um, Officer Overbay, where they had arrested um, Lewis Howard at the Publix for criminal trespass, okay? It happened on May the 21st um, that morning. Um, anyways, so it's my understanding that when Leonard and Over Overbay got to the jail, okay, they refused. Um, I'm sorry, Lewis Howard was refused minutes into the jail because she had claimed that she had a broken rib and um, the this the nurse not the jail staff the nurse refused because of the possible broken rib all right it has been advised to us that Leonard chose to act in an unprofessional manner while she was there so on the video what I can see there's a conversation she is having with someone on the phone. This is exactly what she states. They are refusing Lois Howard for another bullshit reason, so we're dropping her ass off at the front of the jail so that when she calls 911 again, it's the county's issue, not mine. Were you on the phone with her? I don't believe I was, no. Okay. Did you at any point ever have a conversation with her? 
on the phone? No, because she was gone. After that happened, they got off. Well, reports were caught up, and then she went home. And then I received a call from the sh- the sergeant in the jail, let me let me know, giving me a heads up that him and her had had words. Okay. He had advised her. He couldn't give me the exact wording. But she said something about, I'm just going to drop her off at the front of the jail. And he said something to the effects that I don't think that would be a good idea or I suggest you not to do that or something like that. Pretty much I, I gathered asking her, don't do that. It wouldn't be a good idea. So then he turns around and tells me that uh, he's got to let his supervisors no he's got to send an email because they're going to want to know why an ambulance pulled up to the front of the jail at whatever time in the morning picking Lois Howard up okay so, so at any point while she was there at that jail I don't did you ever I, mean, have, I can get my phone but I don't remember talking to her and I don't remember her saying to me I'm going to drop her ass off up front okay did you ever talk to her on the phone while she was at the jail no no do you know who she could have been talking I to? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Do you but, have I mean, I can phone? pull my phone. I mean, that's been since... But I don't remember her saying anything because I specifically told Captain Tucker because he asked me. And Okay. But, I mean, I can check my phone just to double check. But I don't remember having a Where's conversation your phone down? down there on, on my desk. Was it your personal phone or is it your work phone? It's probably my work phone. Do you mind grabbing it and let me look at it? Thank you. Grab my notepad, the yellow sticky notepad, the conversation I had with the sergeant and the jail. Okay. okay. Let me open it up for you. Yes, please. Just about any time I talk to her, and I, for the life of me, can't remember her calling me while she was at the jail. Okay, because there's two there's two calls on here on May 21st. There's one at 1:22 a.m. for one minute, and then there's another one at. 2.01 a.m. for 13 minutes. 2.01 would have been when she was getting off. They get off at 2. Okay. I okay. can't even remember what time they took Lois Howard in either. So, it was at 12.40. And then we've got a call here at 1.22 for one minute. 40 minutes later? Mm-hmm. Which would be about right. I swear, I don't, I don't remember her saying she was going to drop Lois' his ass off at the front. Okay. What were you doing at the time of this call? Do you remember? I could have been here. I could have been out. I have no idea. That was Thursday night, early Friday morning. It's Friday morning. I have no idea. Okay. Let's see if this works. So, we're a minute in. 122 is when you had that phone call. Do you, do you remember this conversation? I don't. I promise you I don't. I mean, it could have been. I, I don't I don't know. There was a lot of stuff going on. Me getting reports and stuff. It might have been me. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I'm not denying that she was talking to me if that's the time that was on my phone, but truthfully, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's possible. But if I'm not mistaken, you know, that's... She dropped one off on day shift the other day. I don't, I don't know, but I don't remember having that conversation with her or her calling me or what the conversation was about. Can you open the back up? Were you aware that she had dropped people off at the front of the jail before? I want to say she dropped one off on whenever she's on day shift the other day, possibly. I don't know. She was saying something about they took somebody and they refused them. And they dropped them. She dropped them off up front. Okay. Did you have a conversation with her about that? I mean, as far as not doing it? No, she was just, that was in conversation, and I didn't even, I mean, I figured that would have been a Soto issue. Okay. I mean, maybe I, I guess, you know, thinking back on it now, probably. But I didn't say anything. I mean, no. Okay. Um... Do you think what she did was acceptable? Do you think that... No. Do you, if, if, if that was you on the phone with her and she was talking to you about this situation, 
okay? Is that something you would have let her done? Because, I mean, it's like, man, I was, I called the lieutenant after I talked to Sergeant Embriano was the one that called me. So when I got done talking to him and writing that stuff down, then I called Lieutenant Campbell. And then at 7 o'clock that morning, Friday morning, I called Captain Tucker and told him what had happened. Okay. And it was discussed between me and Lieutenant that we would sit down and go over it today and figure out what we're going to do about it. Okay. And I don't know how you can't remember that phone call. I do not I mean, we might have had that phone call, but as far as everything that I said, or if I would have, you know, I don't know. I can't remember. But I'm sure evidently I didn't tell her not to do it or she would have done something else. So it, you know, a lot of times she just calls me and she's, she's yapping about, disgruntled about this and about that. And... I just sit there and she, I mean, she gripes about everything here lately. So, but, I mean, it, if that time's on my phone and that's on her body camera, then it probably was. But as far as I can remember telling her not to do that or exactly what I said to her, I have no idea. So, I don't. I don't. Do you remember what you were doing at one more than likely, I was here at the office trying to get stuff called up from where we were so busy. And I've had some other stuff going on outside of work. So, more than likely, I was sitting at my desk. Would you have been reviewing reports or...? Probably. I mean, if I was at my desk, that's exactly what I was doing. Was anyone else here with you? No. No? Nobody was in the sergeant's office. Can you open your phone again, please? Did you ever try to call her? Because this is an outgoing call for one minute. So that means you would have called her? Possibly, but I didn't. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't, you know. Like I said for the life of me, I can't remember the conversation or anything so I mean I may have seen something on one of their reports and called her for that but I can't remember exactly what I mean I wish I could remember but I can't open it up one more time for me do you remember what the 13 minute phone call was at 201 after all this? It's them going home. Okay. What was all said? I have no idea. More than likely, did she call me? Her calling me? No, this is an outgoing call to her. Then maybe that was what she forgot some stuff on the report or something. Like I said, I, I talked to all of them through the night. I can't remember. So you called dispatch at 157. Do you remember what that was about? Might have been for times with that rig I worked. So at the but then again, I talked to them several times, normally through the night too, so I can't really. But I know I called them one time kind of late to get times for an accident. Okay, because then directly after you talk to them, you contact Leonard. Did they call you about an ambulance having to go out to... They call dispatch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe so. But they were sending it to the animal shelter, is what dispatch told me. But then again, I talked to him that night about... They had some perishables that some deputy had brought in, and maybe that's what that was about. What's the 1147 number? It's a Gainesville number. Cancel call. It's in between might you have, talking to Leonard might, and dispatch. Might have been that lady from me working on that, trying to get that girl out of jail, 
in Glane County. That might have been the. That might have been the. Uh, might have been the. It might have been the Susan. She had some kind of weird last name. Anyway, she called. Goodness. Did you know about this whole situation prior to the ADC calling you? No. You did not know anything no. about it. The ADC asked me to call and said that Lois Howard, they were having to send the ambulance to get Lois Howard at the animal shelter. Okay. And this was this phone call right here at 338? Uh, probably. Okay. Probably. All right. But the Gainesville number, hold on, I've got it wrote down somewhere. Sue, what was that number again? Because I dealt for like two hours trying to get that girl out of jail. Okay. And one of those phone calls might have been in reference to, well, that wouldn't have been that late. I know, I think I talked to Leonard about, because she was the one on this case back in January that she took warrants on that girl, and then they were, she took warrants that morning, and they were, dis, they were dismissed, mm -hmm. or she dismissed the warrant because it, turned, it fell under that amnesty law. Okay. But, I mean, like I said, I, but I know that at one point, Dispatch called, I think, about some perishable food, and I told dispatch to call Leonard because they were supposed to be at the jail. Okay. So do you think that's maybe when you tried to call her? Probably. Because there is a, yeah, there's calls. Okay. I'm sending these screenshots to my cell phone. Okay. Okay. Do you, are you, have you ever been made aware that Lieutenant Campbell told her that she cannot drop people off at the jail that she either has to take them to the hospital or she has to take them home. I know in our conversation with Lieutenant Campbell, because I always call him, especially when something like that happens or we have a use of force. Anything notable, then I'm going to have to send a notification. I'll let him know. And I believe he told him. We, made, we were talking in our conversation about she knows better than that because we're responsible for her. So... I think that was the gist of my lieutenant's conversation after I talked, got off the phone with this sergeant in the jail, and he told me why. Okay. But as far as the direct him telling her, no, I don't remember. But we talked about how we're responsible for her or anybody. We just can't just drop them off at the front of the jail. We need to take her either home or a family member's house or like the hospital. Correct. Like I've always told you. So, you have to have someone responsible for that person when dropping right. them off. Okay. But now that was mine and his conversation, but as far as the direct him telling me he had told her, no, I don't remember anything like that. Okay. Have you spoken to her about this? I haven't because he called me whatever time it was, like 4 o'clock in the morning, that Sergeant Ambriano called. And he's like, hey, I just want to give you a heads up. He said, I think the world of Leonard. But I wrote down... He said, I wouldn't do that if I was you. So after you after you got this information, have I you haven't spoke talked to her, her about no, it? No, I okay. haven't. I haven't talked to her. I talked to I talked to him and then I turned around and I talked to Lieutenant Campbell. Lieutenant Campbell said to call and let Captain Tucker know. So I got off the phone with Lieutenant Campbell and then at seven o'clock or a little after seven o'clock, after I left the gym I called Captain Tucker and told him what had happened. And I also told him, just like Lieutenant told me to, to let, I told Captain Tucker that me and Lieutenant would start taking care of it as far as whatever discipline or whatever, whenever I came in today. Okay. Because he was off all last week. Okay. Um, I, so at this time, this is all the questions that I have for you. Now, that being said, I may have further questions for you later on. Okay. So, now, what I will tell you, I'm giving you a direct order. You cannot speak to anyone about this. Not Lieutenant Campbell, not Officer Leonard, I not mean, any other one on the shift, not the chiefs, no one. You yes, can only speak to me. Are we clear on that? Yes, ma'am. That is a direct order. Today's date is May 28th, 2021. The time now is 1622 hours. In the room is myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer and Sergeant Gregory Ayers is in reference to an internal affairs investigation. Okay, um, thanks for coming back in. Um, I'm simply bringing you in just to clarify some stuff. Now, you have previously signed a uh, Garrity warning. Um, this Garrity warning still stands. 
And it covers this invest or this interview as well. Are you clear on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I think I I don't want to say that I misled you or that the questioning wasn't to par the last time we spoke, but I want to make sure that I clarify some things because the investigation is rather extensive and there's a lot of moving parts to it. So with that being said, um, okay. Officer Leonard takes and drops Lois Howard off at the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office, um, or arrives there and attempts to turn the female over to detention personnel, okay? Lois Howard is refused because of broken ribs, okay? Are you familiar with that at this point? I am now from all this, yes, and okay. from the other night talking to the sergeant in the jail and her report. Okay. There is radio transmission here, okay? Do you remember the jail, and I, I'm asking this because there is radio transmission, at 1.58 in the morning, EMS is called out there in the vicinity of the jail. All right. In the vicinity of the jail. And apparently, Lewis Howard makes a comment that the officers broke her ribs that were just out with her but weren't officers. Do you remember this? I remember getting a call from dispatch saying that EMS was dispatched over to the animal shelter where Lois Howard, Howard had called for an ambulance. Okay. And that her ribs were broke. Okay. So from that... But the best I can recall, okay. she was saying that Jerry broke her ribs, not the officers broke her ribs. Okay. Now that's my understanding. So at that point, do you think maybe you understood that she wasn't in jail and that she had to have been dropped off yes, at that point? I mean, you would have to... I mean, that's what you would confirm from that, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, so... There's a 13 minute phone conversation, like we established from your phone, the last time that we spoke. That 13 minute phone conversation occurs at what, two o'clock, 201? Something like that, I believe. The radio transmission here is at one, 158 in the morning. So I imagine directly after that occurred, you contacted Leonard, correct? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's on my phone. Yes. Okay. Do you remember contacting her? I remember talking to her just like I do other people several times through the shift. Okay. I don't really pay attention. Do you remember calling her? And I'm asking this because it was directly after this. And it's my understanding that at some point you wanted them to come back to the jail and download body camera footage, right? I mean... I'm guessing that, uh, that they know that they're always supposed to have low body footage. So, but I mean, if it was, it wasn't anything I don't believe directly to that. It's just they know they're always supposed to download their body cams or leave them here, not take them home without stuff downloaded. Okay. Because I didn't get the call. I mean, I knew about the ambulance getting called to the animal shelter for Lois Howard because I talked to dispatch. I don't know exactly what time that was. Okay. It says 1.57 a.m. on May 21st. Mm -hmm. Outgoing call to dispatch. So evidently that's whenever they called me. Over the radio to have you call mm -hmm. them? How long was that phone conversation? And then, let's see, a minute. Okay, so that would be about right, and then you contacted Leonard. I'm trying to jog your memory here. Is I'm trying right? my best, trust me. I mean, I've, I've tried to think this whole thing through what, what all's happened. And then there was an out, outgoing call to Leonard at 2.01. And 
have you been able to remember any of that conversation? I don't, unless it was something about whatever business they had as far as reports and all that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've racked my brain trying to think about what the 13-minute conversation would have been with her. But, I mean, now, I mean, she could have told me. I'm not saying that she didn't. I just don't remember if she told me that or not, and that's on me. Just like with dispatch telling me about Lois Howard, that was that's totally on me. I take full responsibility for that. But as far as talking to her about that, I don't I don't remember any of that conversation. Okay. I mean, I wish I did because I I don't have anything to hide. I ain't never had anything to hide. Okay. But I mean. In that phone call conversation, the first one, that one minute, have you been able to recall anything from that conversation? Do you remember any of it? No, unless it was like like I, we talked about before, unless it had to do with grabbing that food and taking it over to the battered women's shelter. I don't know. Okay. I mean that I'm I'm halfway sure of that's what that was in reference to because it had nothing to do with but for her to grab that or could have to call dispatch or go to the dispatch and get that perishable food for the homeless shelter. It's the best I can recall. Okay. I mean, I wish I remembered it, but then again, if she told me that, I didn't act on it. That's, that's totally on me and I take full responsibility for that. Okay. Um, what did you think about Lewis Howard being over there at the animal shelter? To be honest, I guess, I mean, I just kind of blew it off because we're, we're constantly dealing with her. She's always talking about having some kind of ailment, which regardless isn't right. Because I mean, thinking back on it, I wouldn't want any of my family members just left out somewhere at one o'clock in the morning. And like I said, that's, but like I said, I had, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I had a lot going on, not just at work, but at home. And I was just, I don't know. I was just, it was negligent on my part. And like I said, I mean, I've always, I remember the words Chief Mitchell told me whenever he hired me that as long as I treated everybody like I wanted my grandmother to be treated, I'd have no problems. And I didn't, and that's on me. Because I pretty much, you know, I was like, well, you know, Amos is coming to pick her up. They're going to take her to the hospital for whatever. I mean, she's, I don't know of anything, which isn't, doesn't make anything right, but she's never had anything wrong with her. It's like she's, she's always crying wolf about you know, Jerry Jones has kicked her in the back and she broke her ribs and she's got bruises and this and that and the other and none of that's ever, you know, it's it's all false. Uh, you know, and I, I should have acted on it and I didn't. And that's, like I said, that's on, that's on me. I have to live with that. I mean, looking back on it, it's like Chief Mitchell said, I, it, that's, that somebody's mother or sister or something, and I should have acted better than, than what I did. Do you know if it's common practice for them to turn off their body cameras as much as they have been? Nope. I've told them just like I told Lieutenant Campbell, just like I told Captain Tucker. I've always preached, even whenever I was FTO and I was training people, they're not to turn their body cameras off until they're in their cars leaving the scene. Have you been doing the body cam reviews? This month or last month? No. Bass has been doing them. I've been doing them monthly. Bass was in charge of doing the audio video reviews. Okay. okay. All right. Well, that's all, the, that's all the questions I have for you right now. End of recording. The time now is 16.30. Today's date is June 16th, 
2021. The time now is 1640 hours. In the room is myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer, Lieutenant John Loomis, and Sergeant Gregory Ayers. This is in reference to Internal Affairs Investigation uh, 033. All right, so I've got you back in here today because I have um, a few follow-up questions to go over with you. Just to backtrack and reiterate, this is in reference to um, a situation that occurred at the jail on May 21st with Aaron Leonard. Officer Aaron Leonard, um, where Lois Howard was dropped off at the front of the jail. Okay, so the first question that I'm going to ask you is, uh, when was the first time you knew Officer Leonard dropped Miss Howard off at the front of the jail? When was the first time you found that? Yes, I can remember whenever I talked to the person at the sheriff's office in the jail who informed me that they had had to call an ambulance. Oh, well, I'll take that back. Dispatch called and said they were dispatching an ambulance to the animal shelter for Lois Howard. Okay. When you got that phone call, <clears throat> what did you do after that? Went back to work. Did you contact Leonard about not. what occurred? Not that, not that I know of, no ma'am, I did not. The timelines on all that stuff, like I said, it's been so long ago, I can't remember hardly anything that went on. I remember talking to Leonard about some barbecue or some perishable stuff, I think while she was at the jail. Then, I don't remember any conversation with her about Lois Howard at the jail. Like I told you last time, if I talked to her and she smarted off something about it, I was doing other stuff and I just didn't act on it. Um, she pretty much said that they, that 329 and 348 forced her into a car and now she's got rib pain and was Lewis saying, Howard? Lois Howard. I uh, said that they forced her into what car? Into the police car. They tried to, they took her to the ADC. Right. And she's saying that they forced her into the police car and now she's got pain in her ribs. Does she want to go to the hospital? Yeah. We've got fire headed out there. I just wanted to let you know. Well, I think she was complaining of her ribs whenever they were on scene, but. Okay. I'll find out from Leonard about what was causing her rib pain. All right. All right. Alrighty, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, thanks. All right, bye. How did you know that? How did you know that she was complaining of her ribs on scene? I have no idea, unless I, I, I don't know. I'm, did you go to the scene? No, I did not. Mm -mm. Did you talk to anyone else that was on the scene? Not that I remember. I think as far as I know, uh, Leonard and whoever else, I don't even know who else was on scene. Like I told you, I didn't even read over that report. I see Leonard writes a report, and like I told you before, between her and Johnson and them, that's all on me because whenever they write a report, I don't even, I skim over it whenever I see it, Sam, and I see what kind of report it is, and I skim right over it. I don't read their reports word for word. Okay, and like so I said before, Lois is always complaining of injuries that don't, that don't exist. So did I play it off? More than likely so because every time we go out with her, Jerry's kicked her in the ribs, she's got broken ribs, or she's got some kind of medical issue, but she don't hardly ever want to act on it. And we've never found anything that she's complained about, substantiated, during the whole ordeal with them. So did, did I play it off as her just calling Wolf again? Probably. But now as far as that, I don't know, I can't remember because it's been so far back, I don't remember every sequence of events that happened because like I said, with it being Lois Howard or Jerry Jones, we deal with them sometimes several times during a work cycle and it's always something fraudulent to the point to where people's talked about being able to what we could do to actually charge her or Jerry about making all these fraudulent accusations that are never true. So that's been so far back, I can't remember every sequence of events that happened on that case. Okay, so this is the problem I'm having. I cannot locate any phone call that you had with dispatch in reference to perishable items. So that one minute phone call conversation, okay? What was it? Do you, have, how can you not remember I have that? no idea. It was a one minute conversation you told her. that happened. I, like I said, I don't, I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. 
This so, been so long ago, I can't remember every sequence about that situation, that call. Because like I said, most of the time it's BS between Lois and Jerry and none of it's ever, and I, I but get But the that. problem is, did Leonard pick up Parrish Bottoms? Did she I don't know if she up? ever did or not. I relayed she that information. Not. Okay, well, I relayed that information. I told dispatch, just like I told you, she was at the jail to contact Leonard. That way she could pick him up while she was there. Did it ever happen? I don't know. I went back to doing other stuff that I needed to do. So I don't, I don't know if she ever picked him up. I don't, I don't know her, if she did or not. What, what other stuff was you doing at the time? I was looking over reports and like I explained to Sergeant Cromer, and it's all on me because I know we're supposed to leave whatever's going on outside work when we come to work. This is where it work. But I had a lot of other personal stuff going on at that time that my mind was all over the place. So like, I, but like I, again, that's on me. I took full responsibility for that. I'm well aware that I'm, from, I'm reliable for every one of the officers that work under me of what they do on, on this shift. I understand that. I'm supposed to watch over them and I'm supposed to relieve them and guide them and supervise them better. But I can't remember what I can't remember on any of that. Because like I said, with Lois Howard and Jerry Jones, which I'm not saying that that's right, but they've made so many calls. We've dealt with them so many times you can't unless i was to go up and visibly see a wound on her she calls about him assaulting her all the time she calls about and he calls about them making threats to each other all the time do you remember the 13 minute phone call conversation i don't okay but it wasn't only on the phone it was in person as well i know for a fact that leonard wasn't on her way home when that 13 minute phone call conversation occurred okay do you want to know how I know that? It's because you also talked to Oprah Bay at the same time. They were here. She had him on speakerphone, and y'all were having a conversation. Okay. You also pulled up here at the PD and had a conversation with them about plugging in their body cameras to download the footage. Do you remember any of that? I remember talking to them about making sure that they don't cut their stuff off at the jail or anywhere else until they leave a call. I've explained that to all of them. But why would you ask, or why would you tell them not to cut their stuff off at the jail if you hadn't watched the like video footage? Like I said, footage, ma'am, I haven't happened? watched the video footage. I haven't watched the that, video footage. Hold on, footage. stop. You're not, you're not answering my question. Just listen to me first before you answer, okay? If you knew that they had cut it off, like you had just said, that you had watched the video, or that, you, that they had cut their video camera off, how did you know that? Did, was that in the conversation? That they had cut them off? I'm trying to help you remember what the conversation was. And I've, tried, I've tried my best to remember. I can't remember. More than likely so. I, I don't know. I know maybe they did. Like I said, if, if, they, if they've got a better recollection of what took place, then that is a good possibility that might have happened. But I preach to them all the time whenever I notice this on video reviews or whatever, if they're turning their stuff off, that they don't, that's not what they're supposed to do. That's not up to their best interest, especially when they go to the jail. I've told them countless times, different ones, not just Leonard or Overbay, but everybody on the shift. I've told them just in case, especially if they've got somebody that's acting combative, that way they've got their own video or we have their own video of whatever's going on if the jail has deputies have to put hands on people. That way it can't come back on us. But like I've explained to you, I have nothing to hide. I'm not, I don't, if they say that that happened, then more likely it happened. But do I remember everything? No, I can't. Okay, so we've established here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we've established that you knew she dropped her off at the jail prior to you speaking to Sergeant Embriano at 3 o'clock in the morning. Is that correct? Through dispatch and stuff. Yes, ma'am. So you were fully aware? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did you find that action acceptable? No, ma'am, I did not. Okay. What action did you take? If I didn't you did take, take any. any action, why not? I blew it off. But like, so like I said, it's, it's Lois Howard, and I had a lot of other personal stuff going on. That's on me. I get it. And that's what I'm trying to that, That's the only explanation I've got. I had other stuff going on at home in my personal life that... I should have tried. My, I should have tried harder to put 
on the back burner and handled my supervisor duties at the Kent Police Department, and I did. Lois and Jerry Jones are always complaining, and that's not excusable either, but that's, that's, that's my reasoning, the best that I can explain. They're always saying that they've got injuries that we've never been able the injuries aren't the issue here. It's where she left a mentally handicapped yes, elderly I, I, woman. And I told you last time. And the time, way she acted in the jail. And I told you last time. I had no idea until that, sar that, that sergeant called me in the jail and told me how she acted. And then after that, I made it clear. And I made it. Uh, I notified Lieutenant Campbell. And then at 7 o'clock that next morning, I did exactly what I told Lieutenant Campbell I was going to do. I called it Captain Tucker. And I made him aware of it as well. So you didn't think it was warranted that you called Campbell prior to speaking to Embriano about the situation from what you already knew? You didn't think it no, was ma warranted to contact them and let them know? Evidently not. Uh, let's change gears for just a minute. So, <clears throat> in timeline wise, and you said before you. Timeline-wise, timeline it didn't matter because you kind of don't remember. So you, you did say that you didn't watch the video, and to date, you still haven't watched it. I don't think so, no, sir. Um, so this night when this happened, Leonard left at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Is that when she gets off? She was, the phone call conversation was at 2.01. She had it. It was after that that I, she left. She leaves around two. Sometimes she leaves later than that, depending on, I think, well, I don't know if the time, there was a time that she was working 11-11, and then the, they changed it to two to two. So when she leaves, you knew, you were aware of what happened before she left. And another hour goes by, and the jail calls around 0-300-ish. And they let you know um, how she acted in the jail. Uh, they, they basically complained on her. So you've, you've got a complaint on, a, on an officer. And this is at 3 in the morning. So from 3 till the time you got off, you got up at 6. But did you hang around and, and call somebody at 7? You called Tucker or Campbell? No, sir. I called Captain Tucker probably about 30, maybe 30 minutes after I got off the phone with the jail. So and during that four I hours, the jail know what went on with. So you, you did let him know, but during that four hours, from three till six or seven, you you never thought to look at the video or to to contact the sheriff's office and say, I understand the complaint and we, we will be looking in. I wrote all the information. And I talked to the sergeant on the phone about me taking care of as far as contacting my supervisors. So to help me understand, help us understand, um, there's a lot you don't remember. Yes, sir. And I hate asking personal questions, but you're on my time when you're here. What part, what was so important sir, I, in your I've been life? dealing with custody stuff with my ex-wife, and I had a flooded half of a house. And there was floors ripped up nasty smell trying I mean I got maybe three hours three or four hours of sleep amongst that like week of having my house have the house halfway tore apart and dealing with my ex okay. at the same time so those are those are the things that you vividly remember dealing with her was you dealing with her at three o'clock in the morning or no sir I wasn't uh, are these things and is this just going on in your mind? You're not yes, concentrating? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to figure out my mind where your was, frame of mind was. My mind point. was scattered all over the place. I was trying to figure out how I was going to deal with the custody of my kids. I was trying to deal with trying to figure out what the next steps were, trying to get them to get the house straightened back up because I was just about to get my kids for the weekend or for visit for more visitation. So, yes, sir, I, my mind wasn't completely like I should have been at work. So, 
So I don't remember. I don't remember a lot that went. I mean, I, I've racked my brain and, and tried to remember and, this I, and I, I, and I, I like I said, I do remember talking to dispatch about them dispatching ambulance to Lois Howard and me not acting on that. Did and anything it, cross your mind after the fact, like when you're when you went home and you had a minute to for it to sink in? Was there all that kind of went through my mind about I what I, what I should have done. done. Yes, sir. Yeah, of course. What I mean, I, I know I should have acted on it sooner. I know Leonard had been a handful and me having to try to put my, as a figure of speak, thumb down her and supervise her harder. But like I said, at the same time, which is really no excuse whatsoever when it comes to coming to work, my mind wasn't completely on trying to deal with Leonard and having to, to do that. I mean, like I said, I've got home, I went home, I sprayed bleach, I put fans on my floors trying to get them dried up to get the smell away and everything else. So, no sir, my mind wasn't, it, my, my mind wasn't 100% at the PD like it should have been. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, why did you feel like you needed to supervise Leonard Harder? I mean, why, why do you think you needed to put your because thumb down? Because she always, she's gotten more arrogant. She's got more cocky the more that she's learned. And she's tested stuff, just like we talked about on that body cam footage of her on the traffic stop about the girl that possibly ate meth. She likes to go that extra length. I've had another one that's not here anymore. He used to try to do, he would push just as far, just to see just how far he could go. But she's a little, even a little bit different because she, I guess she feels like she's, and she does work hard and she is knowledgeable. But at the same time with that, she, I feel like she thinks that she's supposed to be dealt with different as far as being more lenient because of the hard work she does and her knowledge and her going and getting, you know, into stuff here and there. She she has to be what you know, she she I've just watched her closer because like I said, the more she gets out here is, you know, and it's even her with going out here, going on a call and then they say, you know, she's wanting to find dope on somebody. It's just she's she's it takes more to manage and supervise Officer Leonard than it does other people because she pushes a certain, uh, just a little bit different, a little bit further into stuff. It's just like that night on the traffic stop with the dope. I had to sternly tell her, and I don't have to do that with other officers on the shift. But like that night, I had to halfway talk sternly to her and say, you are gonna get with the nurses at the jail after we get EMS to come out and check her and you take her to the jail. She has to be she has to be watched a little bit closer. So wouldn't it be fair to say that you were watching her a little closer that night? Not that night, no no I wasn't. Whenever all that that traffic stop and stuff came up all I, right after all this got started. Because I seen then that I was gonna have to watch her even closer. But I've always had to talk a little more sternly in, in situations here and there. And it's always worked because once once I talk to her kind of halfway sternly like that, then she understands. It's like she just, she, she reverts back to what the way she used to be and the way she needs to be. It's just sometimes, like I said, with, with all the dope cases and stuff she gets, I guess her ego and everything just kind of, she gets to where she thinks that she can just do whatever. So it wasn't until the traffic stop after that, that's whenever 
I told her that night that she she need, she was going to check with the jail and let them know what had took place out on the road after EMS and stuff left. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll just clarify. I mean, I, I appreciate you being candid with us. Um, during either the, I guess, 13-minute phone conversation you had with Leonard, uh, maybe, maybe even in, during the uh, personal meeting you had with her, she did make a statement that um, she was never told not to do that. And you said if, if, you know, if we had talked to somebody else and they said they told us what happened, then that's probably what happened. So is it fair to say that if she, if she says... Yes, she, sir. Like I told you before, she said that we had that conversation. We probably did. Okay. And like I said, I appreciate you being candid with us. I, I have no reason. I have nothing to hide. If I, if I remembered, I would tell you I remembered, but I don't. Uh, and like I said, it's no excuse for the stuff that I had going on. So, it, like I told you before, if they said that we had a conversation about it, it might have happened. Can I remember it personally? No. And I, I don't. I've never had a reason to lie, and I'm not going to lie about it. So. Well, those are all the questions that we have for you right now. Again, understand that you cannot speak to anyone about this um, except for him or I. Uh, if we have any further questions, uh, we'll let you know. We'll call you and have you come back in. At this time, do you have any questions for us? No, ma'am. Okay. All right.